If you tell the dead to rise, then they will rise. Stop wasting the power. Until your reason is accomplished, the power has not been given to any devil to kill you. He whom the Son has set free is whatever God gives you is sufficient. Come on, for your assignment in life. King of glory, we honor you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, your mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When the music fades, when all and I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's so worth That will bless your heart oh, oh, oh. I'll bring you more than a song
my scripture is from Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now he quoted the Bible. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, it is written. So even when the devil said it is written, you're still going to answer him with it is written. Again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Praise the Lord. I want to talk on worship particularly today. Yesterday when we were talking, I concluded by saying, where is this taking us? The more we dig into it, the more of a worshiper, true worshiper we become. And that's why the closer you approach the throne, the lower you go. In his um, meditation, he said, I'm amazed at your glory. His glory will never cease to amaze his creatures. And yet, every of his creatures bears the signature of his glory. And so he demands that all of his creatures will give him glory. And yet he's the most glorious of glory. In fact, he is glory personified. Now you can begin to have a feel of the kind of thing that he was talking to us about. And if you will recall, for those of us who were there, there was a warning. I said it, I started, but I didn't conclude the matter. For every revelation of his glory, of his presence, of his person, there's a trial. That was where, that was where I stopped. So the excitement of a sweet revelation is a trial. It's all through the Bible. But the benefit is that it takes you from where you are higher. You are obeying the command and saying, come up hither. You are, come on. Given that in, I mean, by birth, regeneration, we are one with him. But experientially, we are becoming that one continuously. That's why, sorry, our salvation that started the day that light broke loose in my inner man, in your inner man, and you saw him and you accepted him as a Lord and Savior, positionally he became perfect and he became one with him. But continuously and experientially, you are becoming more and more like him. And that's, what we, and that's how we define sanctification. Because the moment you are, you are separate from the world, but in your thinking and in your actions, you get, a, you get perfect, more perfect, 
perfect, wasn't it? Perfect, wasn't it? And that's why renewal of heart is a continuous thing. And that's why the ultimate of our salvation is at the rapture. When we will see him, we will be exactly body, soul, and spirit. But right now, we are one with him. They were separated by environment. But let me just get into the context of where, of where we read. Remember when he was born. The Bible says <laughs> something happened to the shepherds. Glory shone around. Then he spoke to them. You see, the thing about his glory is that in his glory, encounter with his glory always leaves an instruction. Some other thing that happened then was, you know what, what then they finished that. Then the Bible said, wise man from the east saw the star. When we talk of glory, usually it's physically defined by light. It was in the light that can't be approached by anyone. They saw, we said, we have seen his star in the east, and they traveled all the way. Why did they travel? Can somebody help me? <clears throat> Why did they travel all the way? Thank you. To do what? Wow. So, in other words, the object of worship has come to earth. They came all the way just to worship. You see, once it is his glory, you cannot perceive his glory and not worship. He comes from within. Even animals know, plants know, every creature knows. So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is now we can see Jesus, the object of worship. And kings will come all the way just to worship him. Then he moved to the, where staying with his father, teaching him carpentry work. What was he thinking? He probably would be saying, I'm not going to live by carpentry. Probably. But he learned it. Then we didn't hear much until age 12, remember? When they were, okay, no, we heard when he was doing his purification. And when the old man that just could not die saw him and came in by the spirit and being with laughter and spread at his arms and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. According to your words, for my eyes have seen. One began to wonder too that it, did he know who he designed or who he perceive what was happening? Maybe. We're talking from a human angle. Then age 12, he came into the temple. And for three days, come on, let's face it. Not three minutes, not 30 minutes, not three hours, three days. Come on, mommy. Come on, daddy. Three days? Where is it? Ah, you mean you were just chatting and talking and enjoying yourself for three days? And it took you three days before you discovered? Praise God. But they didn't see him. And when they returned, he was still in the temple. And the teachers and the, law, the, the experts were sitting around this small boy and they were being puzzled by the kind of things he was saying. And they would talk and they would talk. And, ah. and they too didn't go for three days until the parents came. And they asked the question, why did you do this? He said, don't you know I will be about my father's business. Oh, now this 12-year-old now clearly has begun to understand why 
is here. Big gap again until just amazed at the way John was fulfilling his assignment on the earth. I'm like, wow. The devotion, the commitment, the faithfulness of faith. Not now, then. Servant of God. And Jesus was like, wow. And at that time, John saw him and said, hey, behold the Lamb of God. Wow. That took away this is Oh, I'm sure I look for where to dock. For the first time, it was publicly declared, publicly declared this is the object of worship. This must be worshipped. This is God personified. The war followed. He came to John. And John said, no, 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 no. He said, John, we say you did. John, please suffer the, these things to be. Don't let's start arguing. This is your ministry. I am coming to partake of the assignment of the kingdom which you are meeting out. Okay. As he was coming out, ladies and gentlemen, the heavens opened. And God spoke. This is my beloved son. One version, I'm not sure if it's here. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, yeah. After the matter of two or three years, what shall be established? John just declared it. And, hey, who is now? And now God declared it. And of course, again, it was declared and affirmed by the descent of the Holy Spirit. Now it has been declared clearly. John spoke openly. The heavens opened, the door came down. They saw it. God spoke. What is what kind of what does that prove you want? The tradition of the religion is such that confirmed by two or three, by their greatest living prophet, by heaven opening the door of coming down, and they knew what he meant. And they heard God speaking. What does he want? Oof, I feel the fire. Then the Bible said he came out of the, of the water and he was led. But I made to understand that, check the Greek word again, he was driven. D I R I V E N, he was driven, like he shoved away. Why? Because the flesh will want to show off. God just said, Tango is my son. Yes, sir, yes, sir. He was driven into the wilderness. It was an act of God. And when he got into the wilderness, what happened? The Bible, let me use the Bible's, I mean, this passage as it were, the Bible's nomenclature. It was made by the tempter. Tempter. Can I quickly explain something? Because time may not permit me. I have battled it before. I've tried to study it. In the book of James, he said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse what? You know, it says, for the trial of your faith. Trial and temptation. I used to think they're different. It's the same. As a matter of fact, when God drove him, he was subject that revelation to a test. So from God's perspective, is a test. From the devil's perspective, it's a temptation. From my perspective, it's a trial. It's the same thing. 
Every revelation we go through this. Just. The day you say, I have made a covenant with my eyes never to look on a damn cell, every woman will attract you. And you become fighting yourself. No, you don't go to revelation. You're about to climb the next level. The devil will try you. God doesn't commit to an untested vessel. And that was exactly what was happening with Jesus. You know, we're talking worship here. So the devil came. If you are the son of God, and he knew that he had been fasting. So, genuinely speaking, it was the truth. He was serving. He had a real need. The devil will not tempt you where you don't have a need. He will attack you where you have a need. So that you feel, with a sense of justification, you just jump into it. No! God has spoken. Can you see that? We were saying the same thing. If you are the son of God. Now what Jesus have about his sonship is more than a revelation. Is an affirmed truth. If you call revelation, it's a confirmed, affirmed revelation. So it was like, I was like, God, hey, hey, hey. It drove him there. And the tempter came. If you are the son of God, don't stone to bread. Now that God has given you this grace and position and power, use it to meet your need. The devil make you feel justified. But it's not for for your need. Your need will be met. It is for his glory. Another explanation to that is now that you have the means to conjure or to make happen, why don't you do some commercial? some business, some commercial activity. Because look, with the kind of grace upon your life, wow. And that's why it's pretty easy for Ross ministers to merchandise. This very truth of who we are and who he has made us and the fact that we already have a revelation and we're working in it, it's pretty easy to commercialize it. It's a slippery ground. That you are the son of God is not in question. That you have control over many things is not in question. Why don't you use it to enrich yourself? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The second time, if you are the son of God, you see, all this trouble is because of the revelation of who you are in him that you now know or you have. That we begin to manifest anyhow whether the devil likes it or not. He says, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down. No normal man will do that. They will get injured or die. But you are the son. Jump down. It is written. He will give his angel. He will quote scripture at you. Sometimes you quote the Bible to justify a wrong thing. Grace works. Grace covers it. I have. 
That's quoting the Bible to justify wrong. When we're saying, we're saying it is written to go against God's will, which you know is against his will. And this generation will preach as if justified. I'm not trying to belittle grace. Grace is big, man. Grace is the reason I'm standing. Actually, but for the mercy of God, well, I will be consumed. I will have gone. You've gone. So we celebrate grace every day. But don't let's abuse the grace of grace. It is written. He will give his angels. But that's true. Charge over you. Although he will, create, he will, he will quote and misquote and, you know, just tweak it to what he wants to. Sometimes we preach messages and turn the Bible just to say what we want to say. Can't you see that was the trick of the devil? But Jesus said, it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. What does that mean? What they were saying. If you are the son of God, eh, show it. I don't need to show you anything. I don't need to impress any man or woman. It's the God that has given me and in the mission he has given me for that it shall be proven. I don't need to. The problem we have, some people want to show off. Some of us ministers and some of us Christians, we want to show off. You don't, when you try to show off, the devil will get you. Don't show anybody, don't show anybody anything. If you are the son of God. And when that didn't work, he came the third time. If you are the son of God. Can you see the glories of this world? And true, the world has glories. If only you will worship me, I will give them to you. Because they, have been, because they are mine, they've been given to me. When you get into showing off and you must impress people, you will compromise. You want the glories of this world. He said, worship me. And that was the most dangerous of all the temptations. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Worship me, he demanded. But let me go back, put it there, I, want to, I think I should conclude. Then Jesus said, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord. So somebody said, he sets the priority in worship here. That's what she was saying. It's worship before service. Don't kill yourself running to make it work without knowing that it's not by might, it's not by power. It's by his spirit. As difficult as it may be for religious people to accept, we are not saved to serve. We are saved to worship. A worshiper will freely and copiously serve. A servant may necessarily not, I mean, may never even worship. And that's what one of the things that Paul was saying. He said, look for faithful men that will be able to commit things to. Do not look for able men that you want to make faithful. Usually able men don't become faithful, they become prideful. But faithful men always become able. Can you see priority? So when people ask me, how do you prioritize this thing about ministry? You know what I tell them, which is the truth? Number one, your relationship with God, your fellowship, that's your strength. I'm not talking ministry now, you need to watch it. For a lot of ministers, we minister very well, but our fellowship is almost zero. That's, no. That's number one. Number two, your spouse, if you're married. Number three, your children. 
Really? Number four. If you are in somebody's employment, you cannot disgrace the kingdom and God. In that. You give that priority. Before you say, my ministry. The moment my fellowship coming from a relationship is super, everything will fall in line. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We worship the Lord of God and only Him shall you serve. The last point I'm going to make here because we have to go. We are made to believe now that the devil, see how, see, the tempter is always there. And who, who appoints the tempter? Or who allows the tempter? The same God that gives the revelation. Because he's the agent of the test, of his test. But for the devil, he's trying to tempt you to remove you. But God is trying to test you to see how strong and how your dissolve is as by what you got. But for you, you are going through a trial. True worship is usually filtered through what you just said. You just saw. The object of worship, himself now said, you will worship the Lord of God. Himself now became a worshiper. He is to be worshipped, and yet he's worshipping. Shall we rise?